guys, welcome back to another bonus segment of Wild Wisconsin. Today, we're at the CWD Processing Center, and I'm with Tammy Ryan of the Wisconsin DNR. Tammy, why don't you tell the folks what it is that you do for the DNR and what's going on with CWD? Sure, I'd be happy to. I'm the Chief of the Wildlife Health Program for the Department of Natural Resources, so it's a statewide program that's centered on all things wildlife health. It includes in the chronic wasting disease program, which is why we're here today at the CWD Processing Center. Yeah, so if I'm a person that's not familiar with CWD and I'm wanting to learn more about it, what are some of the first things that I need to know? Well, I think uh, if you're a deer hunter, for sure, I think that a lot of the audience is, and that's probably why you're tuning in today. And so as a, as a deer hunter, it's important for you to be aware of the fact that there is a disease that's endemic to the state of Wisconsin. Um, it was detected back in 2002, so we've been monitoring this disease for the last 16 years. So for someone that's not familiar with CWD, what exactly is this disease? What does it consist of? So CWD is known as a, a transmissible spongiform encephalopathy, so it's a TSE, which is a, a disease that's caused by a prion, and a prion is basically a malformed protein that causes the disease process in the infected animal. So it's transmissible because it can be transmitted from animal to animal, um, from deer to elk or elk to deer, um, and also it's infectious. So it's an, a disease that can be spread from um, deer to deer through that, uh, either through your uh, the exposure to saliva, um, urine, feces. Those are all known to contain pre prions that can be infectious. Also to the environment, we know that prions can um, persist in the environment. And so even after an infected deer may have left an area, another deer comes along, they certainly could uh, you know, receive that infection through the, uh, through the environment as well. So once a deer becomes infected, um, somehow it, that, C, that CWD prion um, enters into their system generally through the oral process, you know, through, their, through their mouth, or, um, and so ultimately it gets ingested in some manner. Um, and then once the disease takes hold of the animal, it actually can reside within an animal for up to 17 months or longer, um, where that animal is actually infected with the disease, but outwardly it doesn't look as though it's infected. And then it could take, you know, beyond that time frame is, you know, anywhere beyond that 17 month time frame, it could be two, three years before they actually like hit that clinical state where they actually start to demonstrate outwardly the impacts of the disease. So the disease is a neurological disease and ultimately it works its way into the, to the brain. When that, that final clinical stage is, they're gonna be demonstrating certain symptoms like um, inability to walk or um, maybe their heads are tilted or the ears are, are drooped. Um, salivation, excessive salivation is a pretty common um, symptom that you may note and ultimately in the end the animal does succumb to the to the disease and they do die there is no cure for this disease is it contagious throughout the entire time period it is yes so they can start shedding the those prions um, shortly after their infection so even a health even an animal again like i was saying before one that looks healthy they're still shedding that in, that prion into the environment so this prion is a pretty nasty thing it sounds like how long does it live in the environment and how long can a deer get this disease if it's dropped off from another animal? So the, the, that's the million dollar question. Uh, there isn't um, research out there that really um, ha that demonstrates how long the, the research that is out there has demonstrated that the prion can be infectious up to two or three years either from the environment or from an infected carcass. But the suspicion is that it's likely longer than three years, but there just isn't science or research that's been done out there to back that up. So this disease, as the animal gets it, it's consistently then getting worse from the time it gets it until its death. What other secondary factors does that gonna have on the animal's life and its environment? Certainly, you know, if you're a deer that's infected with this disease, um, you're gonna be more susceptible to predation, you know, the, the instincts or the natural ability to evade a predator are going to be hampered, for example, sure. or may be more susceptible to getting struck by a vehicle or, you know, or succumb to the conditions of winter. Um, we certainly do know that the disease, however, you know, can cause mortality and has. I mean, we have a pretty um, 
important policy in our department and it's an important point to share with all the deer hunters in our state as well as the citizens of the state. If you see a sick deer that's demonstrating the symptoms of CWD, contact your local wildlife biologist because we would like to get that animal off the landscape. So the people of Wisconsin can do a lot to help you guys. Absolutely. There's, all the, there's many more eyes and ears out there than there are within the agency and with our program itself. And certainly anything that um, the citizens can do to kind of keep their eyes and uh, ears open for uh, any situations of sick deer in the landscape, we want to know about it. So we covered the overview. And you mentioned this disease has been around for a long time. What did you say, uh, early 2000s? Yes, that's correct. How has it progressed? Where are you at now versus then when you started all this research? Sure. Well, that 16-year timeline is a really long time frame to be monitoring a disease in a wild population. We've, we've learned a lot and we've seen a, a lot of change over, over time. Certainly in the beginning, it was with you know, the detection of two uh, animals that were harvested in the previous fall of 2001. And then uh, we now fast forward to 2018. Um, you know, we've gone from, from one county where we had two positive deer detected to now having 55 counties that are CWD affected, of which 25 of those are counties in which CWD has been detected in wild deer. So we got a lot of counties affected since you started in 2002. How do you know? How do you keep track of all this stuff okay. as it goes? Sure, that's a really good question. Well, it's, it's primarily through our CWD surveillance. So essentially what that is, is um, we seek to um, do surveillance so that we can either detect the disease or once we've detected the disease so that we can assess the di distribution and prevalence of it. So um, essentially, you know, through collecting samples from, from deer through either hunter, hunter harvest. So um, with thanks to all the great Wisconsin deer hunters that we have out there, we've got lots of samples that we've um, been able to receive over the years. And through that, through that interaction, we've been able to document and, and basically quantify one of the largest data sets that there is out there in any wild um, disease process that's occurring in a wild population. So it sounds like a busy process. How do you keep everything efficient? It sure is. Well, we have a, a, an awesome team um, within our, our program, within the wildlife management program. Uh, basically, um, divide and conquer approach where, yeah. <laughs> where every area of the state where either we know that CWD has been detected, so then we seek to learn more about the disease there. We have a targeted 10 mile radius surveillance circle that we identify around those known locations. And then every year we have a conversation about basically evaluating where we've been and where we want to go. And so looking at that, we identify um, new strategies or areas of the state where um, we may seek to apply weighted surveillance, which is a way for us to detect disease in areas where it's not known to currently exist. So we really focus in on the adult buck uh, cohort of the population. And so we know that they have the highest um, prevalence in that mm -hmm. cohort, right? Adult bucks are, um, have the highest prevalence in Wisconsin. So by working with taxidermists, that's a way for us to get a, our hands on those older bucks. Um, so every year we just kind of brainstorm and identify, you know, the best approach that we have with the resources that we have, both staff and funding, to kind of apply, you know, an efficient approach um, on the landscape. We don't do a, a statewide approach every year, but we are um, looking to do another sweep uh, across the north, um, starting starting in West Central District this year and then working our way each, each year thereafter to kind of do a sweep across the northern forest region. We also though, even though we have these targeted surveillance areas that we identify every year, we do provide hunter, uh, hunter service testing, which is essentially if you're a hunter, a deer hunter in a, an area of the state, and you'll see our surveillance strategy, it always gets posted on our CWD web pages. So if you're a, a hunter in an area of the state we haven't identified where we're going to target our surveillance in 2018, um, but you harvest an adult deer and you want to have it tested for CWD, we certainly will accommodate that. So that's that hunter service testing. You can either um, take your deer into any of the established locations that are also identified on our website, 
<clears throat> but if that's like too far to drive, you can then just contact a local wildlife biologist and they can help you out. So you've done all this sampling. Where are we currently at today? What's the status of CWD? So where we're at today is at the CWD Processing Center in Black Earth, Wisconsin. Um, this is the, the hub of all of our CWD sampling and operations. But essentially this is it. This is where all the, all the samples come and get processed and then ultimately um, all the information that goes along with the samples gets recorded. That's, you know, that information is how we're able to get results back to the hunter. Um, the samples that are collected get delivered from here to our, our partner lab at the University of Wisconsin, the Wisconsin Veterinary Diagnostic Lab. They're really a, a key a partner in this whole endeavor. It's because of their efforts that we're able to actually get the results right. <laughs> on, the, on the tissues that are collected and, and share that information with the hunter. So this is, this is the uh, CWD Central main thing that I'm taking away here is that you guys have made this very easy for people to submit samples and help you out. Yeah, so we, uh, we have information on our website on where all, all of our CWD sampling locations are. Um, it may be a cooperator that's like a small business operator, mm -hmm. a gas station or, you know, something like, or a bar, something like that. Or um, we have what's known as a self-service kiosk. So it's basically do it yourself. We're gonna have okay. all the tools and everything available, including these data sheets. So regardless of which method that a hunter may pursue to have their deer tested for CWD, it's a pretty simple process. We have a very um, refined data, sh data sheet that we just would go through or require the hunter to fill out. Essentially, the lymph nodes are collected from the, from the animal or the head is submitted, and then the lymph nodes are extracted from the head. They, the, they get, those lymph nodes get placed in these two baggies that ultimately end up at the diagnostic lab that I mentioned before. But then every, every CWD sample then has a barcode number, and so you'll receive, you'll have this provided to you at the time of sampling, or you'll take it with you if you're doing it yourself at a kiosk. Hold on to this because ultimately this is the number that's associated with your test result. You can track this right on our website, go onto the CWD result, te CWD result page. The other way is that you'll, um, if, you've, if you've harvested a positive animal, you actually get uh, contacted by the department directly just to kind of walk anyone through what do you want to do with the meat? If you don't want to keep the meat, we'll help you dispose of it properly, that type of thing. But ultimately, hopefully, you know, um, you'll get a not detected result and, um, and you can you know, make your decisions on venison consumption from there. Right, and as far as that is concerned, is there danger involved with eating the venison? So <clears throat> we, are, we defer to our Department of Health colleagues and uh, essentially, you know, what it is, that they, what, they, what they share. And, and basically, there's no evidence that humans can, can get CWD through the consumption of meat. However, the risk isn't zero. There's research out there that has shown some susceptibility to, to primates. Um, and so humans are primates, and so the risk right. isn't zero. It's still a very, very low risk, but it's not zero. So what the, what they kind of, the qualifier to that advisory is, get your deer tested and don't consume the meat of a positive animal. It's a really important situation that we're dealing with here in Wisconsin and we really need your help and the help that we've received so far from Wisconsin deer hunters has been outstanding and we'd just like to see that continue and I certainly want to thank you on behalf of our agency for all that you've done to help us over the years. Well thanks for joining me today Tammy and thank you guys for watching. You can find more info on the website from here. Appreciate you watching. We'll see you on the next segment.